Hello, and welcome to Apparitions and Alibis. I am your host, AJ Stallman. How you doing? You doing good? I hope so. If not, I hope everything gets better. Some fun news on my end is Apparitions and Alibis have listeners in Ireland. I would love to do some like cute Irish accent thingy, but I would be horrible and I don't want to offend anyone. Just know, my grandmother constantly played Celtic women while I grew up. Not the new ones that were touring a couple years ago. She doesn't seem to like them. They're not as good. <laughs> they, they have some good jams though, not gonna lie. My fiance Ashton has also been to Ireland, I think. Her grandmother took her at age 16 to the Europe area to build churches. I'm probably getting this all wrong, but Ashton got to see many beautiful sites and I'm pretty sure that Ireland was one of them. And she's dying to go back. She's probably going to listen to this and just be like, seriously, you don't even remember one of the biggest important times of my life. I love you. Don't leave me. <laughs> However, I personally am just dying to uh, get out of America. But that's besides the point. The world super sucks right now. And there isn't much we can do about it at this moment except wear our masks, wash our hands, bow our heads and promise our firstborn in exchange for happiness. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so the last haunted tour we took was in Claremont, Virginia, and today we aren't going too far from there. We're waddling up the road to Surrey County, Virginia. And if you have gone to school in Virginia and maybe other states, I don't know, uh, you may remember learning about Bacon's Rebellion. Well, our haunted stop today is at Bacon's Castle. That was not built by him, nor did he live there, and he possibly never even stepped foot in it. Meh. History's weird. But I have my coffee, I have my dogs, no snack today, but let's do this! Warning, you may hear the upsetting and spooky noises of my stomach growling. So Bacon's Castle has many names. The gentleman who built it was Arthur Allen, a British tobacco agent. And later his son, Major Arthur, 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 Arthur Allen. Yes, he took it over. When the son took over the home after his father's death, he uh, made one of English America's first pleasure gardens. Don't get nasty. It's just a garden. Now, this beautiful home is actually the nation's oldest brick dwelling and only surviving Jacobian structure. It actually has 70% um, of the original built, uh, too much coffee, the original bricks still intact. Um, while it is beautiful, it also played a role in the infamous Bacon's Rebellion of 1676. History buffs and architects aren't the only ones drawn to this historical brick building, however. Paranormal researchers often come here and have collected informational proof that the castle's ghosts are very much real. Spooky things that have been caught are as follows. EVPs or electric voice phenomenons, personal experiences, flashlight communication, and K2 responses um, captured on video. Oh yeah, and ghostly photographs. The team behind Spirited Away, Spirited Away, <laughs> Spirited History, <laughs> are the ones to have caught these items. I tried really hard to find their information um, and accounts of it, but I could not find the investigation. So I tried. Some other fun happenings at Bacon's Castle are fireballs, floating heads, and disembodied voices. But what's the story behind all of these happenings? <laughs> Well, the building has had roughly 360 plus years to build up energy. It was built in 1655 
And in 1669, when Major Arthur Allen took over and installed pleasure gardens, a lot of surrounding neighbors looked really funny at them. Like, seriously, a garden to just chill in the audacity. In the 17th century, Virginians did not much, did not have much, my God, cut out my tongue. They didn't care about the art of culture, of landscaping. They didn't find horticulture to be a worthy hobby, if you will. But when Major Allen took over the home and revealed the castle's new garden, that's my dog scratching her tummy, um... He revealed the garden in 1680. He had turned a large rectangular plot of land beside the house into a green oasis, if you will. It was fenced on three sides, the fourth side being bordered by brick. It featured white sand pathways, rows of planting beds, and an orchard. Today, there are still some 17th century plant specimens growing in the garden such as Larkspur and my favorite, Snapdragons. Besides his green thumb, Major Allen was also known for his status in the community. He was once the Justice of the Peace for Surrey County Court and eventually, in 1686, became Speaker of the House of Burgesses. That was my shoulder popping if you heard that. <laughs> he was a supporter of Governor William Berkeley. It was during Berkeley's second administration that Bacon's Rebellion occurred. Like Berkeley, Nathaniel Bacon was of English descent. He arrived in Jamestown around 1674. And because he was related by blood and marriage to some influential people in Virginia, it only took Bacon like a year to become a member of the governor's council. Berkeley would 100% regret his new hire later on. Only two years after arriving in Jamestown, Bacon got on his high horse and challenged Governor Berkeley directly, even laying siege to and then burning Jamestown. This hissy fit was because Bacon didn't like how lenient the governor was on Native Indian policies. Berkeley allowed friendly tribes to live on treaty-protected lands, for instance, and failed to retaliate after natives attacked several colonist settlements. Old Nate Bacon, on the other hand, deemed all Native Americans to be enemies. Someone needed to teach him how to paint with the colors of the wind. He easily gathered an army of supporters. Many colonists were not fond of natives. Don't even get me started on how this whole country was settled and the bull crap we put natives through. Okay. But they also hated how governor, the governor, handled state taxes, budget, and infrastructure. After a few initial actions against his enemies, Bacon was arrested and tried for treasonous ways. But upon his release, he just went to his same shit and continued to oppose Governor Berkeley. In 1676, Bacon and his bits, <laughs> do you get it? Like his followers, but bits, Bacon bits, you get it? <laughs> <laughs> well, they marched down to Jamestown, burning buildings and attacking those who support the governor. And uh, Major Allen's home would fall into their path. On September 18th, 1676, the author Arthur Allen House was seized by 70 or 80 of Bacon's followers. Luckily, Major Allen got the hell out of Dodge, um, but his home wasn't protected. Baconists, which is a really weird thing to say, go ahead and try it, would occupy the mansion for about three and a half months, only leaving when Bacon got the runs and died of dysentery. When it was finally safe for Major Allen and his family to return to the home, it was in shambles. What wasn't pillaged and looted was severely damaged or completely destroyed. Bacon's castle, AKA 
Arthur Allen House, had around 18 slave quarters and lodged as many as 300 slaves. Doing the math for you, that is roughly 16 to 17 persons in one cabin. Conditions in the dwellings were horrible. While wealthy colonists lived in the large brick buildings, servants were stuffed into wooden rough squares with hardly any furnishings. Only one of the original 18 buildings still stands. A former slave was once questioned, their response being, us never had a chair in the house. As for beds, they had piles of hay with rags thrown on top. With the amount of people in one building, illnesses spread very quickly. Being surrounded by misery in life, their souls are not restful. One tour guide of Bacon's Castle says there's a young African-American girl who died tragically in the cellar of the home, who enjoys tugging on visitors' clothing. The basement is the most active area of the building. I couldn't find what happened to the little girl. I did try. Another spooky experience is that of a disembodied head of an African-American woman that randomly appears about. I can imagine seeing that one. That has to be terrifying. <laughs> Within the building, other activities that incur, incur, occur include chairs rocking by themselves books flying off shelves, and doors closing all by themselves. Once a woman found her room in complete disarray. A lamp that was normally on the table was leaning against a pedestal, and its globe was smashed into pieces. But like the little girl in the cellar, not only do the spirits move items, but they enjoy touching and pushing visitors as well. They also seem to be very noisy, People have heard loud popping noises like gunfire interrupting the house's silence. You can also hear footsteps stomping down the stairs, as well as disembodied moans and wails. Some even say that they have had voices telling them to get out. In 2014, Preservation Virginia launched Haunted Bacon's Castle, which is a public tour for horror enthusiasts. Those who attend are led by the Center of Paranormal Research and Investigation, a team of ghost hunters who have done extensive research at Bacon's Castle. During one of their investigations, they actually caught disembodied voices and screams. The team's chemist stated, we throw out 99.9% .9 of activity we encounter in our work as it not being paranormal, but the activity at Bacon's Castle, we can't debunk. We have yet to find a location that has more activity than Bacon's Castle, and we do research all over the state. But honestly, what interests me the most is the fireball. Not only a spicy adult beverage, but also a possible omen seen over Bacon's Castle. In 1675, many believed that a comet that rushed through the sky may have short foreshadowed the horrible event of Bacon's Rebellion. During colonial times, comet fireballs were seen as negative omens. A comet sighting in 1644 was instantly followed by a Native American raid. Another came before the tragic death of a young woman. The girl had been banned from a lover that she had secretly been seeing behind her father's back. One night, the girl snuck out to visit her love anyways. But the flame of her candle caught her dress on fire, and she passed away. Fireballs are also believed to punish naughty children. One local legend tells of a fiery sphere killing a little boy because he refused to finish his chores. These comments continue to make appearances at Bacon's Castle. People who live there in the home report seeing them blaze down the stairs. Also, in the cemetery that lies close to the castle, fireballs are known to rise from the graves. <laughs> Hey 
Have you ever thought about making your own podcast? Is there something that the podcast world is just missing that you want to put in it? Well, do what I did and download Anchor. If you haven't heard of it, it is the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's totally free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast, and it's all in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. One cute thing I found was a love letter that is etched into a window pane from the 1800s. I looked everywhere to find exactly what it said to no avail. I guess I will just have to go to Bacon's Castle and see for myself. I will definitely keep you updated on that. And that is the history and haunting of the Arthur Allen House, a.k.a. Bacon's Castle. I really adore the idea of fireballs in the sky just doing their thing and the colonists being like, something bad's going to happen. And the natives looking at the same sky going, it's a sign. Let's attack these land grabbers. It's great. It's great. Thank you so much for listening. I appreciate all the reviews and ratings and subscriptions to Apparitions and Alibis. It lets me know that what I love doing is something others are enjoying too. So if you haven't added us yet... Do so on Instagram at Apparitions and Alibis. And if you have any spooky encounters, please send them in via Instagram. Direct message me. I'm here for it. And I'd love to know what you've encountered. I hope you are having a wonderful morning, evening, afternoon, wherever you are. And I will talk at you later. Doodles!